Hi. So what we're going to be looking at are steam-powered cycles, more specifically simple Rankine cycles. The problem statement we have is to consider a simple Rankine cycle with the following operati operating conditions. Condenser exit temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. Maximal temperature is 600 degrees Celsius. Mass flow rate is 40 kilograms per second. Part A of the problem asks us to determine the power output produced by this cycle. Part B says, assuming a cooling water entering at a temperature of 10 degrees C and leaving at a temperature of 17 degrees C is used to condensate the steam in the condenser, determine the required mass flow rate for this cooling water. CP of cooling water is equal to 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our simple Rankine cycle. We have a pump that goes into a boiler, then through a turbine, finally through the condenser, and back to the pump. If we draw this on the TS diagram, we have something that looks like this. We go from saturated liquid water at a certain low pressure up to a high pressure right before the boiler, through the boiler to a high temperature, and back down through the turbine. We call this point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, and point 0.4. We say that flow is in this direction. We can draw our points on our cycle over here as well. One, two, three, and four. Let's look at what's been given. They tell us that the exit temperature of the condenser is 45 degrees C. From that information, we can say that temperature at point one is 45 degrees C. They then go on to tell us that the maximal pressure or the boiler exit pressure is three megapascals. That would tell us that pressure at point two or pressure at point three is three MPA. So we can say P2 is equal to P3 is equal to three megapascals. They also tell us that the maximal temperature in the system is 600 degrees C. That tells us that the temperature at state three is going to be 600 degrees C. They tell us that the mass flow rate in this system is 40 kilograms per, per second. We can write that M dot for steam is 40 kilograms per second. They tell us for the second part of the problem that the um, water entering the condenser or the temperature of water at the inlet is 10 degrees C and the temperature of water at the exit is 17 degrees C and they tell us that CP for water is 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Part A asks us to determine the power produced by this cycle. We can say that the power produced by the cycle is equal to the mass flow rate times the specific work of the turbine minus the specific work of the pump. What this means is that we're going to need the specific work of the turbine, the specific work of the pump. In order to find the specific work of the pump, we said that at state one, we had saturated liquid, liquid water. What that means is that the quality at one is equal to zero. From this, we can say the specific volume at one is equal to the specific volume of 100% saturated fluid at 45 degrees C. We're also going to assume that the specific volume at one is approximately equal to the specific volume at two. And then we can write that the work of the pump is equal to the specific volume at one times the pressure at point two minus the pressure at point one. All we're missing here is the pressure at point one, but if we remember, it's a saturated mixture, in this case, 100% liquid, so we can say that the pressure at one is equal to the saturated pressure at 45 degrees C. The saturated pressure, or the pressure at point one, is there for 9.6 kPa, which you can find from your tables, and the specific volume at one is 0.00101 meters cubed per kilogram. With all this information, we also have the pressure at point two, 
we can write that the work of the pump, the specific work of the pump, is equal to 0 0.00101 times 3,000 minus 9.6. And this gives us a specific work of the pump equal to 3.02 kilojoules per kilogram. Now let's solve for the specific work of the turbine. We can say that the specific work of the turbine is equal to the enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at state 4. The enthalpy at state 3 we find is equal to 3,682.34 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at 3 megapascals and 600 degrees C from your superheated vapor tables. We're also going to be saying that the enthalpy at state the entropy at state 4 is equal to the entropy at state 3, and this is equal to 7.5084 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and this is equal to the entropy at 3 megapascals and 600 degrees C. With this value, we go to our saturated mixture tables at 45 degrees C, and we find that 100%, the entropy of 100% fluid is smaller than 7.5084 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, but this value is also smaller than the entropy of 100% gas at 45 degrees C. Now, that means that at state 4 we have some sort of mixture between fluid and gas. We need to find the quality at state 4. And this is going to be equal to the entropy at 4 minus the entropy of 100% fluid divided by the difference in entropy of 100% gas minus 100% fluid. This gives us 7.5084 minus 0 0.6387 divided by 7.5261, which gives us a quality at state 4 of 0.9. One, two, eight. Now we need to find the enthalpy at 4. So we can say that the enthalpy at state 4 is equal to the quality at state 4 times the difference in enthalpy from 100% fluid to 100% gas plus the enthalpy of 100% fluid. This gives us 0 0.9128 times 2,394.8 plus 188.45, which gives us an enthalpy at state 4 equal to 374.38 kilojoules per kilogram. Finally, with this information, we can find that the work, or the specific work of the turbine, is equal to 3,000 682.34 minus 2,374.38, which gives us a specific work of the turbine equal to 1,307.96 kilojoules per kilogram. We're now ready to solve for the power output of this system. We said that the power output was equal to the mass flow rate times the specific work of the turbine minus the specific work of the pump. This gives us 40 kilograms per second times 1,307.96 kilojoules per kilogram minus 3.02 kilojoules per kilogram which gives us a total of 52,197.4 kilojoules per second. We can see here that our kilograms cancel out. And this is equal to 52.2 megawatts. Part B introduces water flowing through the condenser, and they're asking for the mass flow rate of this water. They give us the inlet temperature as well as the exit temperature. So if we redraw our system, we have our pump going to our boiler through our turbine, and then it goes through our condenser. We said we had state 1 here and state 4 over here, flowing like this. Now what we can do is we can add 
water flowing through our condenser like this, and we have temperature of water at the inlet and temperature of water at the exit. What's happening in the condenser is that there's an energy being lost from the steam and an energy being gained from the water. So we can write that the mass flow rate of water times the specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature of the water is equal to Q out for the steam, and this is equal to the mass flow rate of steam times the change in enthalpy, so the enthalpy at state 4 minus the enthalpy at state 1. Now, we can rewrite this equation and isolate for the mass flow rate of water to be equal to the mass flow rate of steam times the enthalpy at state 4 minus the enthalpy at state 1 divided by the specific heat capacity of water times the exit temperature of water minus the inlet temperature of water. The enthalpy at state 1 is equal to the enthalpy at quality equal to 0 and temperature equal to 45 degrees C. What this gives us is 40 kilograms per second times 2,374.38 kilojoules per kilogram minus 1,800, sorry, 188.42 kilojoules per kilogram divided by 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times the change in temperature, so 17 degrees C minus 10 degrees C. If we were to convert these degrees C into degrees Kelvin, we would still have the same delta T, so we can cancel out our Kelvin with our degrees C in this case only. We're going to cancel our kilojoules per kilogram over here, and we're going to be left with kilograms per second. We get a mass flow rate of water, so m dot water, equal to 2,988.35 kilograms per second.